So after years of clamor by Nigerians, President Bola Tinubu has ordered the full implementation of the Stephen Oronsai report. And if implemented, several agencies of the government will be merged or scrapped or relocated, this towards cutting the cost of governance. Ayodele Ozubaku examines the recommendations of this report. After more than a decade of gathering dust, the Orosanye report finally sees the light of day. President Bola Tinubu has taken a decision to tread where others feared by fine-tuning and restructuring the operations of government to cut costs and improve efficiency. The implementation involves merging, subsuming and scrapping agencies with similar functions. The president has also constituted a committee that will work within a 12-week period to actualize this new directive. National Agency for Control of AIDS, HIV AIDS, NACA to be merged with the Center for Disease Control in the Federal Ministry of Health. National Emergency Management Agency to be merged with the National Commission for Refugee Migration and Internally Displaced Persons. Now what that means is that uh, a number of agencies, commissions, and some departments have actually been scrapped. Some have been merged, while others have been subsumed. The Federal Executive Council meeting also received the report submitted by the Interministerial Panel, set up to review the affairs of the National Social Investment Program. Significant recommendations were approved by President Tinubu, and these include social security payments to vulnerable households, payment of unemployment benefits, a social consumer credit program, among others. Comprising 60 million Nigerians is to resume immediately with the proviso, with the important proviso that every beneficiary will be identified by the NIN, National Identity Number, and the BVN. And what we're looking to do here is the triangulation of this data set to ensure that not only are we using uh, the register that is properly, properly been, been uh, uh, populated, but that we also do proper verification of every individual that will benefit from, from that investment, uh, that social investment program. For the Ministry of Works, approval was given for the construction of a 700-kilometer coastal road from Lagos through coastal states to cross river states. It goes through Lagos, goes through um, the Lake Deep Sea port, goes through uh, Ogun State, Ondo State, Delta, by by Elsa, Port Harcourt, Akwaibum to cross the river. But we also have two spores, you know, spores that lead to the north. That goes from uh, the ongoing Badagri Sokoto Road and the one that leads to the Transhara uh, Road that goes from Ogoja down to Cameroon. All eyes will now be on President Tinubu's administration as he takes bold steps towards the implementation of a report considered to be the silver bullet in restructuring and reforming Nigeria's civil service through the rationalization of agencies. Femi Akonde, TVC News, Abuja. And joining us now in the studio to discuss this um, issue, this developing story, is policy analyst Ayodele Adewale. Thank you very much for joining us again Thank you for on TVC me. Breakfast. And um, so there you have it, um, you know, uh, TVC News, Femi Akode, they're giving us some more background to this drive by the federal government to implement the Steve Oronsai report. But a 12-year-old document, yes, it's, uh, it, it looks promising, but there's a concern on ground that it may be outdated, you know, and again, when one looks at uh, the governments, the past governments, especially of Buhari, and even this new administration, where new ministries uh, have also come up, you know, which also increases the MDAs we have now, uh, just how well do you think it will fit in in this implementation process? Uh, thank you for having me once again. I would say that um, the Orosanya report is still very contemporary. 
Yes, uh, some uh, new agencies have, have come up. That is not to say that uh, with the implementation fully of this report, we're not trimmed down the size of government. Uh, like you know, government governance is a continuous. Uh, so many other issues will also be looked into. Uh, people that have divergent view can, can write their own uh, uh, proposition on paper, uh, submit it to the presidency or the National Assembly to also take into uh, uh, take a good look mm -hmm. into this document. Uh, we must commend this administration for having the political will to implement this report. A particular administration put it in place but could not uh, put it into reality. Another administration also came, tried to work it out, uh, but the fear of uh, doing the right thing in order to save uh, common good was, uh, was not too considered. Uh, but for this administration to have looked into it in the bid to prune spendings and, of course, uh, be very accountable for their doings and uh, to put the country in the right trajectory. They've done what is, what is good. And like I said, going forward, uh, many other things still need to be rejected. But whatever opinion that people have, they should put it forward as a suggestion to the administration to look into it and we continue the journey of good governance. What do you think needs to be rejected, as you've mentioned, and many other things need to be rejected? Well, deployment, full deployment of technology into our system, especially using blockchain technology. If you remember during the course of uh, President Tunumbu's campaign, he has said that he's going to deploy massive uh, technology into the system. Uh, this also has been uh, deployed in this administration going forward. But I think bringing that into our corporate governance, especially in the public sector, will do us a lot of good. Take, for instance, the use of paper. If we're able to jettison paper, usage in <coughs> public uh, administration. We've been able to save a lot of money and of course save, save the climate and save our, our, our green environment. These, these things should also come, come into play. Then the issue of people hacking into government uh, system will also be, be reduced. There's a lot of infiltration yeah. going around everywhere. Technology would, would help us uh, curtail many of these uh, actions. So looking at this report now, um, the government has said there will be no lo loss of jobs. Definitely. Do you believe that? Because we don't expect to see two managing two directors in one ministry. Yes, it will. Uh, if you look at it critically, you have two mi 200 million plus Nigerians, as is recorded in our population. Mm -hmm. The size of the civil service structure is not enough to cater for that number. But the question is, how do we generate funds? to increase the number in order to take care of our sundry matters, right? And I believe that is why the president has said, I mean, has put into place a committee to look at how things can be done subtly. And the administration have also assured that there will be, never be job loss. So I think some of these people will be put in more productive uh, departments and agencies for, for productivity to, to strengthen our systems. But wouldn't that also defeat the purpose for the need to implement the Steve Oransai report? If these people are still, or still get to find their, their way back into the system, they may not be in those ministries uh, or departments or agencies, but if the government still feels it has needs for, need for them just because it doesn't want them to lose their jobs despite these um, fears uh, by civil servants, wouldn't that be defeatist in nature? I think the main aim of that report is to, is to eradicate multiplication of duties. There are some agencies that tend to be doing the duty of other agencies. Take, for instance, the anti-graph agencies, right? The police have the SFU. Ordinarily, the SFU should SFI, be the one, right. you understand, doing all of this job. Now you have the ICPC, you have the EFCC, and so many of those things. So by the time you put them together into one agency, right, you would have defeated I mean, multiplication of, of duty that cross borders each other. And this also affects uh, judicial proceedings. For instance, if an agency brings uh, a particular matter before the court, another agency is coming you know, to counter that thing, and their reportage is not in coherence with each other, right? It's going to affect that, that process. 
So I think that is what the report particularly is, is hinging towards. In terms of number, like I told you, if you just oppose the number of our workforce in the, in the public sector to our population, I don't think we have the right number to cater for our, our sundry matter. But the question of funding is always the problem, right? If you intend to create more jobs, right, you have to educate more, more problem. Look at the issue of, um, of generating uh, taxes, for instance. You need more hands. Like when I, was in the, when I was in the local government as chairman, we had a population of almost one million in Amu Odofi. My tax <coughs> officers were less than uh, 300. So how do I cope, mm. right? So you have to also look at what you have on the ground and look at the workforce that you tend to use to solve this problem. Okay, so many people have said this is better late than never, and you have opined that it's quite important. But with the current economic realities, do we need this at this time? Yes, we do. We do. We do. One, to cut wasteful spending. Two, to also cost, <coughs> to cut wasteful efforts right, that can strangulate the system. I'm still trying to understand how this will reduce cost of government. Let me use your enterprise, for instance. <clears throat> you, have, you have the TVC, right, the studio. I know you also have... Um, uh, uh, we have a radio station. You have a radio yeah, station. I'm not even talking about the radio station now. I'm talking of you have something that is like into DSTV. I've forgotten that okay, okay. you understand. You have something that is like into that, right? If you look at these two structures, they tend to be doing the same thing. The one that is liking for the global reach and all of that can be subsumed into your TVC network, right? Mm -hmm. In doing that, you save costs. You take those staff to carry out expanded duties, right? And you achieve more efficiency. Mm -hmm. Rather than duplicate, you understand, the system, and you'll be buying more hardware infrastructure, building more infrastructure, mm -hmm. whereby you can just cope with a little infrastructure that you tend to spend little overhead in order to move your system well, now forward. Now you'll be coping with many more people. Like I said, you expand your reach okay. for those people to, to, to reach out and, and cover, whereby reducing the fund of maintaining that infrastructure mm -hmm. that is in the other structure. What about the issue of um, workload? Because Labour has been uh, speaking about uh, this move by the government and uh, they are saying that in addition to their concerns about the job loss which you have uh, you know, spoken about, there is the issue of, okay, so those who will remain in the system, it, it appears that according to them that they might get to wear the hats of two or three people all in a bid to save costs, the cost of governance. Uh, and so they are also saying that um, the, this uh, implementation committee should also look at how they will, you know, protect, you know, these people if they have to work, if not longer hours, but then, you know, do more work than they have always been doing. I want to believe that the committee put in place is very fluid and they are not too strict to their, uh, their instructions and all that. And uh, the labor have an inroad, they have the ear of the government. They can write down their positions and send it to government, right? The committee will also look into it, you understand, see how these interests can be carried together. They can also be part of this, this committee oh, so that they can push oh, their oh, own definitely. interests. Labor, yeah. Labor will also have, maybe also have members there. The civil service, the head of the right. civil service is, 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 is going to be a member, right? right? So they, they have an inroad into right. it. Let, let, let's look at the uh, intervention because that is also bound to happen at some point. It, it happened in the Buhari administration, the intervention of the National Assembly. And, um, you know, observers at the time also said, you know, perhaps that was why we didn't get to see this document seeing the light of the, of the day. And um, how is the executive going to work with National Assembly. Many of these agencies are backed by law. They are creations of law which was done in the National Assembly uh, by the legislature. What gray areas, do, how do you think these gray areas you know, of you know, marrying the concerns of the legislature, of the, of the executive, how do you think they should be addressed? Well, these are part of the terms of reference that have been given to, to the committee and all that. Definitely <coughs> they will reach out to the National Assembly. The National Assembly will sit down over this matter and look at this uh, very, very uh, strictly, and I believe they will do what is best for the nation. 
Mm. Okay, so let's look at um, if we are saying that we should reduce the ministers, the ministries and agencies, what about reducing ministers? Do we well, need 48? Uh, well, 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 government? well, well if, if you look at that, that is within the jurisdiction of the president. He knows how he wants to govern and carry out his operation. He knows how he wants to simplify his own, uh, his own duties and, of course, uh, extend more powers for things to, to, to move better. I think, I think he will do the right thing when that report is, is, is sent back to him. And if there's a need to prune down the number, definitely he will definitely do the right thing. Do you thing. think there's a need? Since we are looking at pruning down ministries mm -hmm. and agencies, do you think there's a need to have reduced cabinets? Looking at, looking at the jurisdiction in which they cover, right, and looking at how we can use those jurisdictions to bring in more resources to, to the Nigerian state. I, I see nothing wrong in that number, but again, it is the jurisdiction of the president to take his decision, right? And if need be, definitely he will prune it down. And uh, of course, at the end of this, uh, if or when, uh, let, let's be optimistic now, uh, when this report is implemented, a, a sizable amount of billions of naira are said to be, that will be saved, so to speak. And people have said it's also important for the government to also be transparent in uh, how much is um, being generated from the uh, mergers the, and, and all of that, you know, of, of these agencies and also for the government to be open about what it wants to do. Uh, let's quickly have you speak on that first before we, I, I, I touch on an, another point. Well, there is a bill called Freedom of Information that has been passed into law. The National Assembly is there to carry out their own sundry uh, legislative matter. The civil society is there to also interface with the National Assembly and, of course, with the executive. I think... Uh, the question of transparency is very, very germane. And uh, whatever inquest that people need to carry out, they should be free enough to approach these structures of government and definitely uh, answers will be given to them. And um, where do you feel uh, would be you know, the best place for these monies that are saved, that are to be saved? Which um, you know, areas of the economy? Of course, we know the state of the economy, how the government is working uh, to revive, uh, you know, the economy. But where do you think this money should be, um, you know, executed? First and foremost should be security. Secondly, must be infrastructure, right? And the third should be human capital. If we're able to deploy a lot of funds into this area, I tell you, Nigeria would, 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 would move faster in terms of economic growth to where we are. Right what, what about the area of um, you know, social uh, welfare, cash transfers? Human, Do you human, still subscribe human, to human, that? Human capital, when you develop human capital, you will not need many of these things that you have mentioned. If the human capital is well developed to the sense, to, 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 to the level of self-realization and sustainability, each person will create resources, will create capital, and will create the enablement to survive. Okay, so do you think this report should also um, extend to um, state governors, because we see some states who are not financially viable, having a lot in their cabinet. I disagree from that position. Okay. There is no state that is not financially viable. Uh, I'm happy that the president is going to Qatar. I was in Qatar in 2011 for a World Climate Change Conference, mm -hmm. and I saw where they were, they were growing uh, green grass, uh -huh. you understand, at the desert. I saw the rate of infrastructure, the way it was coming up. I saw a new model of skyscrapers without having big bays and all of that. Mm -hmm. And I also saw how they were able to manage the level of temperature in terms of uh, hot weather yes. in, in their environment. And I was able to also help some Nigerian youth to move to Qatar in terms of um, working within their infrastructural uh, real estate area as engineers and all. So that, that kind of structure, they're then going there, learning from that, having an uh, interface with mm -hmm. them, we also help to strengthen a lot of things here, especially in the, in, the, in the northern part of Nigeria and some other part that some people feel 
that they are incapacitated in terms of uh, developing their space to uh, accrue more resources. God has blessed this country so well that there's no part of this country, no state, that is not having abundance of, of, of natural resource. And that was why I hearken more to human capital. If you can develop the human capital to a, to a state of, uh, of a very uh, potent high degree, we'll be able to develop every uh, resources within our jurisdiction for the benefit of self-development and, of course, for the country. A co-presidential um, candidate, Peter Obi, uh, at the last elections, have also you know, given his nod, uh, saying that, of course, this is something that he too would have done if he was president. Uh, uh, but he warns that it shouldn't be done in a hurry, and you know, he gives a lot of other advice. I wonder what you... Uh, you know, think of this fact now, this advice that he's throwing at the presidency for, you know, the implementation not to be done in a hurry. Well, good things are definitely embraced all over the world. Uh, what he has said is quite true. Uh, for the president to have implemented this uh, report at this time is it, very, very good. And like I've said before, that is for the benefit of the country like Mr. Peter Obi have said, he wouldn't have done anything uh, out Different. of it. And uh, the president is not in a hurry to do anything. And that is why he has put that committee in place. He has given them adequate timelines to do wide consultation and, of course, do what is right by firming up their, their system in order not to create any apathy or gap within the stream of the Nigerian state. Do you really think that, um, or what assurances do you have that we will get to that point where the Oron Zaire report uh, will be implemented? Because um, Jonathan tried it, uh, the former president Buhari, uh, President Tinubu's predecessor tried it, and uh, it didn't work due to people have said, insiders have said, you know, some considerations. Some said it was a political decision looking at the, uh, the semantics at the time. And now, yes, another committee is deliberating on it. Will we get to see the actualization of this report? Do you think that the Tinobu administration has what it takes to do it differently? Definite, uh, definitely we will, because you have in President Tinobu a man that is systemic in his approach. Listen to what he said at uh, the Olawas Palace yesterday that he take full responsibility of what is happening, mm -hmm. and he can assure Nigerians that things will get better, right? In 1999, when he came in as governor of Lagos State, there are many naughty issues around. Uh, remember that the labor was always at his godula, was for so many things to be done. He did not uh, walk in a hurry. He was able to systemically put the template in ground, and uh, that is why today the Lagos State governor is commissioning the red line, mm -hmm. right? These are systemic things that have been done over the last 24 years without being in a hurry. The blue line has been a a achieved. The red line today is achieved. People will start using it from today. The buses, the bus system has been achieved. There are, uh, there are piling more uh, systems on it. Lagos will be deploying 2,001 uh, uh, electric uh, uh, buses very soon. These are templates that President Tunumbu had laid over time. The same template is being laid in Nigeria moving forward. Uh, people will come to appreciate and, and thank God for giving us such a man in many years to come. You understand? After seeing the building block and the way they will cascade to putting in place good structural build-up for the Nigerian society and the economy, I will only appeal that people give him more time, try to understand where he's going, and uh, give him more support to achieve all of these matters. All right, so let me ask you a question on um, restructuring. The president said he's not, he is not in a hurry to restructure, um, but the opposition have, have, have um, chided him, saying that, especially the presidential candidate of the Labour Party, saying that should have been the first thing he would have done after his inauguration. Come again, please. The presidential candidate of the Labour Party yes. had chided the president that restructuring should have been the first thing he would have done after uh, taking the oath of office. Mm -hmm. But the president said he's not in a hurry to restructure. 
Well, well, you don't put the cart before the horse. The major issue before Nigeria, when President Tinubu came in, was the issue of sustaining the economy, okay. right? And uh, part of the gaps that we had then was subsidy, which was a very big sinkhole that was taking away a lot of money from the system. Okay. And that was why he took that position and started from that path. And that is why I said you can't put the cart before the horse. Mm -hmm. If you have started with all of that, what happened to the economy? If you don't have funds to support all of the restructuring uh, integrals, how do you move the country forward? Uh, what I'm also thinking going forward is that the National Assembly, which again are put in place a committee to look into this matter that you have mentioned, be able to speed up their processes mm -hmm. in order to achieve all of these matters. All right, Ayodele Adewale, that will be a fine place to uh, leave our conversations uh, this morning. We thank you very much for your contributions on TBC Breakfast.